Hey everybody, welcome back for part three of our little series. We're comparing the Animus Ninja Star to the Black Magic Hyperdeck Shuttle. And we're talking about the pros and cons of each, um, just a general overview of what recorders do, and which one is best for you, because they definitely have similarities and differences which are significant enough that they may not both be right for everyone. So looking at the Black Magic, one of the first things you'll notice is the design of it. It actually has a really nice unibody, very elegant almost design for something in this range um, compared to the Ninja Star. The Ninja Star looks pretty junky compared to the Black Magic. It's, it has a really nice look, and I think it's the type of device that when mounted to your rig is just going to give it a real, real upscale, real nice look, a look in front of a client, that kind of thing. Not that the Ninja Star won't, but the Black Magic, in terms of style, it wins out on that one. Recording media. So this is a big part of the comparison between the two because this is where they get really different. The Black Magic records to SSDs, whereas the Ninja Star, as we discussed in our previous video, records to CFast cards. The big difference here is that for the money, dollar per megabyte or however you want to break it down, the Black Magic is going to record a lot, lot more because SSDs are a lot cheaper than the CFast cards. So you can buy an SSD that's got 500 gigs of storage and record all day long with that, as opposed to the CFast cards. If you want 500 gigs worth of CFast cards, you'll have to take out a loan or something. That'd be ridiculous. So, in terms of storage capacity, definitely the Black Magic wins. That's that's a no-brainer. The SSDs are readily available. You can get them anywhere. I believe Black Magic has a list of the ones that they recommend, but it's it's pretty liberal in terms of which ones you can use, and uh, they're very good. I mean, SSDs are nice because even if you're in a outdoor run and gun kind of setting, they're not like spinning drives where you have to worry about you know movement stuff like that. So you can kind of bolt it onto your rig and you're ready to go. Power. The issue with the Black Magic is that it has an internal battery that is not replaceable. So that means that whatever charge you have is all the charge that you can have. And if you want more power, you have to have an external power solution like a, you know, Anton Bauer, you know, whatever kind of battery mount set up on your rig. And if you have that, then you're good to go. Then it's a non-issue. But we're not talking about bolting more stuff on to make these work. We're just talking about the products as is. So as is... The Ninja Star has a removable Sony battery. It's a cheap battery. It'll run all day, and you can get a dozen of them. The Black Magic is a different story, and I believe on a full charge, you're probably going to get about an hour, two hours of use, somewhere in that range. Not very much. So if you're out there shooting events, you're shooting just sort of out in the field documentary style, anything like that, you're going to run into some challenges unless you do any kind of a power solution. So definitely recommend having some kind of a power or it would be great in a studio environment where it can be plugged in and then it's a non-issue. Connections. The Black Magic definitely wins this one. It has HDMI, but it also has SDI. Now SDI is a much better connection if for no other reason that it's a locking connection. So once it's connected, locked into the device, the other end locked into your camera, it's secure. It's really not going to pop out. HDMI always runs the risk of popping out. Yes, with HDMI, you can add on cable locks and that kind of thing to rig it up a little bit so the cables are more secure. But like we were just talking about, it's not about rigging it up to be better and make up for any deficiency. We're just talking about the features as they are. So straight head to head, SDI beats HDMI. And there's a lot of other benefits too. Most cameras, when they're outputting through the SDI, they're going to output the true 24p, not anything else that has to be have pull down removal from a 60 interlace field and all that stuff. No, SDI is usually going to get you a clean 24p signal, so that's a huge benefit as well. Plus, it's just a more higher professional level connection. So, depending on your camera, Ah, see, now there's the, the, the little disclaimer. There's the asterisk. Depending on your camera, it might have an SDI or it might not. If you're shooting with a DSLR, if you're shooting with a prosumer or lower camera, it is probably not going to have an SDI. So the benefit of having the F SDI is sort of moot. It's sort of a null point. You're going to be connecting on HDMI. Something to keep in mind. If your camera has SDI, definitely use it. 
you can get adapters to adapt the Ninja Star to take SDI. But again, we go back to having to bolt more stuff on. We're not really talking about that. So connections, black magic, that's definitely a win there. In terms of recording formats like the Ninja Star, uh, it's got a wide, the, the Black Magic has a wide range of recording formats available. You will notice again, not a lot of like the over cranking, real high speed shooting for slow mo footage, none of that. It also does not do 4K, just like the Ninja Star, it just sticks to good old 1080, you know, full HD, not ultra HD or anything like that. There are other devices on the market that will get you 4K recording. These two are not those. It also shoots in a variety of different codecs. So with the Blackmagic, you're going to get uncompressed 10-bit QuickTime, Apple Pro S422 or HQ QuickTime, Avid DNX HD, and Avid DNX HD MXF. So what do all of those letters and, and words mean? Those mean that you're going to get a lot of different recording formats. They're going to have a ton of information in them. The Avid formats are huge. Most people are probably going to use ProRes. That's the more widely uh, used format. You know, all your nonlinear editors are going to be able to read it. And the nice thing is that even though the files are large, because it is uncompressed, it doesn't really take that much computing horsepower to be able to use these formats. This applies to both devices. The great thing about using QuickTime is that it's less compressed, and when something is less compressed, it's easier for your computer to read that footage. It's just there. It's not decoding anything. It's not unpacking anything. It's not opening it up. It's just reading it straight out. So your file size is a little larger, more data, but then almost any nonlinear editor, you can just drop it in, no transcoding, nothing like that. Just drop it in, boom, you're ready to go. Mounting options, you have a couple. There are various plates that you can add on that give you sort of a cheese grate or that offer rail support. So you can mount this through a rail system. This is a heavier device, so the mounting is a little bit more robust as opposed to the Ninja Star, which is lighter. So you can mount it a lot easier and a lot more uh, different options and stuff. You can use those little arms, you know, the, the adjustable arms. You can use a ball head on your hot shoe and mount it. You can pretty much stick it anywhere and it's going to be fine because it's so light. The Black Magic's a little bit heavier, so you're going to take a little bit more work to mount it. You want to make sure it's a little bit more secure, but at the end, the mounting is really not an issue. Another benefit of using the SSDs is that once you're done shooting, this device basically just becomes an external hard drive. You can just take this, plug it straight into your computer, and just start editing on the drive. You don't have to actually take the footage off because it's already on a hard drive. You don't have to move it to another hard drive if you don't want to. So you can pop in an SSD, shoot, take it back to your computer, start editing right there on the same SSD. The whole file's right there. Depending on what your budget is, you could theoretically just have a different SSD for each project. Shoot, edit, everything's done, self-contained, filed away, just move on to the next one. So that's a real big benefit being able to shoot on SSDs. That's just one less step of copying footage over that you don't have to do, that you would have to do with a CFast cards with a Ninja Star. So the Blackmagic HyperDeck Shuttle is a great device. Its biggest perks are the fact that it has SDI as well as HDMI. That's a big benefit to people with more pro level gear. There's a, it's a much stronger connection. It's just a better connection to have overall. So that's definitely a big plus. The design, the physical design of it is much nicer. It seems, feels much more heavy duty. And the recording format onto SSDs is much more convenient than what you're gonna find with the Ninja Star and its CFast cards. So those are definite perks. Obviously the downside to the fact that it has a non-replaceable battery. That means when you're out in the field shooting, if your battery dies and you don't have an external power solution, you're kinda out of luck. So definitely something to consider for people that shoot documentary style, run and gun events, anything like that, just be aware of the power limitations and make sure you have something to compete with that. So that wraps up part three. Next will be the final conclusion. We're gonna kind of give a quick breakdown of both and then I'm gonna share with you who I think each device is best suited for, what the strengths and weaknesses are in comparison to each other and uh, where they both land in the marketplace. Thanks for watching. As always, remember, please subscribe, share if you liked it. Leave a comment below if you have the Blackmagic HyperDeck Shuttle. How do you like it? What applications are you using it for? Maybe post some pictures of your rig with it mounted and, uh, and share with the community on what you think. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next one.